Hey everyone, why do I have handcuffs and a handcuff key in front of you? Well, we're going to reach way back into the memory bin on this one. It was my 10-year DEF CON anniversary back in 2010. I was on stage with some tool people, and we were revealing research that a bunch of us had engaged in regarding the search for the perfect handcuff key. And since that talk is a good decade ago now, I figured we could revisit it and make sure anyone out there who wanted one would be able to convert their handcuff key into what we called the perfect handcuff key. But first, a little background on handcuffs and handcuff keys. If you've never been in cuffs, well, either you're a very law-abiding person or you don't go to the right parties, but they're not very complicated mechanisms. On the inside, you just have a simple ratcheting arm called a paw. That's what you hear clicking as the bow comes around, its teeth engaging the ratchet teeth. If you come in with the cuff key and turn, the bit of that key pulls down on that paw, allowing you to unlock the cuff. So an additional kind of view, thanks to my lovely wife's clear handcuff in her collection, you can very much see that ratcheting arm, that paw springing up, engaging its teeth with the teeth on the bow, and if you operate a cuff using a cuff key, well, it's a simple affair of that little bit mechanism reaching down, coming over, and contacting the edge of the paw so it can be pulled down and allowing that arm to swing out. And maybe you encounter handcuffs from around the world. Here we have a set from South Africa. Here we have an old Hyatt's pair that used to be used by Scotland Yard in the UK. In each instance, and in many others that you might run into, fitment issues, sizing issues, mean that a conventional, full-size, American-style bit will just not fit in there. But the ultimate handcuff key that we released that year at DEF CON a decade back, why, yes, she can absolutely fit inside the Safari one over here. We can absolutely fit down inside, tight though it may be, inside the old Scotland Yard riot cuffs, and on and on. Here we have a slightly higher security, hinge-style set of cuffs from Spain. Will our key fit in there? It's made from an American cuff key. I don't know. Oh, of course it will, because it fits in everything. Because of my travels around the world, I now have Russian handcuffs in my collection as well. These big bruisers, well, you might not even find a way to get an American key to fit and turn inside the body of one of these. However... Absolutely. The universal key barely can grab that paw because we've chopped the key down so much. But it works in these. How about these guys? They don't even have a center spoke. They have a very strange shaped uh, little, little flat key blade. But with a couple of passes around, we absolutely can get this key turning, get that paw moving, and get out. But now we come to the real interesting cases. Cuffs from Asia. Not unlike attempting to rock a rhyme that happens to be precisely on time, these are real tricky. The Kyung Changs, well, they are known for literal... I don't even know if I want to use this key in there. They're known for eating cuff keys, if you're not careful. And the reason being, they have not two, but in fact three paws way down inside the body, and sometimes they can get stuck on one side or another of your key bit. The real monsters in my collection, though, that people used to talk about all the time, hard to find nowadays, are Yules. Yules also from South Korea, also a multiple paw system, but in addition to those two paw blades, you can even see a very smart, very good design, a full metal blocking element running com completely between them. The key on a Yule has a large split in it. And if you ever have tried to operate a Yule with a conventional key, I mean, it just, it absolutely will not turn. It'll fit, but it's not going anywhere. Well, on both of these crazy Korean sets, can the universal key work in there? I'm pleased to report that yes, it can. You have to be careful on those Kyungchangs, because again, you don't want to get in a trapped condition, but it'll smoothly turn because it's chopped down just enough. And the coup de gras, the Yules... It'll fit in. You just have to find where that slot needs to line up. It takes a little more manual dexterity, but absolutely, 
That'll pull down on both of those pawls as well. So if you have a conventional handcuff key, but you wish you had the universal handcuff key, how do you convert one from the other? Well, it's not really hard. We're just going to chop it down with some very precise measurements. So what tools do we need to turn this into this? Well, nothing sophisticated. A rotary type tool with simple cutoff wheels is enough to get you going. And to do the measurements in the process, well, a simple Home Depot Husky brand set of approximators, that's going to be just fine for our purposes. Now, two modifications are the principal ones that you're doing, maybe a third in some rare instances. The bit is the main thing. The bit itself is usually far too long when you get it right from the factory. See, we're coming in at three and a half millimeters here. We want to chop that down to a good three, maybe even a hair under. See, here we are coming at about 2.9. That's no problem. That's going to fit into some of these weird foreign cuffs. The other thing you can spot in all these footages, well, obviously there's a slot as close as you can make it right down the middle of the bit once you've once you've chopped it down. Here are our original diagrams from that DEF CON talk we did so many years ago. Pretty easy to follow along, no? And now that we've established what we've got going on here, We've got a bit that's just a little too oversized, right? We're coming in a three and a half. We want to lose about half a millimeter. There's a couple of ways to do that. You could either shave from, in my perspective, the left side of the bit. It's less work. You're just going to chop the bit itself down and not have to work with the shaft at all. However, I tend to like to come from the other side. Why? Well, because it gives the entire front face a really crisp, squared off 90 degree edge. So, we all understand? Okay, nothing to it but to do it. As AVE would say, engage your safety squints. gotten pretty hot, but has she slimmed down at all? Yep, we're part way there. Let's keep on keeping on. Remember, you can always cut a little more. You can't easily add metal back on, so keep checking your work. Look at that. Pretty spot on. I'm pretty happy with that. And if we take a look at the actual tip, which is mighty warm, we have just discovered. You can see a really nice crisp edge. And that's what we wanted to square off well in the bottom of those cuffs when space is a factor. All right, now that we have our bit down to size, it's time to smooth over any rough edges we may have left, and I can feel we've got one kind of on the crown there, and then drop the slot in the middle. Here we go. I like it. I like it very much indeed. And what would the ultimate test of that situation be? Well, let's grab some of the cuffs where the old key wouldn't have worked and see if it works now. All right, we have our new key and we have our old nemeses, right? The Yule and the Advanced Model ASP. Let's see. Can we fit in here and grab? Yes, we can. We can get both of those paws moving. No problem. ASP, usually a bit of a tight fit. If I can get it over that center post with a good ka-chunk, I should be able to come around and absolutely get those paws to release. That's the one thing that some people like to do. I said there might be another modification. That very, very inner diameter of the center post bore, 
Some people like to widen that out just a hair to give it a little better chance in clearing some real oddball cuffs with very thick alignment shafts. So if we want to treat the center bore, that inner diameter, with just a little bit more action, well, small diamond grinder will do. It's just very subtle to see, but we did make the entry corridor just a little bit more smoothed off, a little bit easier to get in there and around some of those hard to align posts. Much smoother action. There we go. Can still turn, can still clear, can still open. The tool ultimate, ultimate, right? I mean, we should be proud of it. We should be proud of the research we did. It was a really fun project and everyone had a good time. If you haven't seen the old DEF CON talk, we'll drop a link to it down in the doobly-doo. But yeah, get yourself a pretty cheap Smith & Wesson style key, dollar or two online, turn it into a key that you can use the world over. Stay safe out there. Last time I was filming anything involving handcuffs, I was on TV with the Mythbusters, teaching them how to use a bobby pin, try to reach in there, and grab the paw. Huh. Nice to know I've still got it. Well, that was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Got ourselves a nice universal handcuff key. But now here's the thing. I already have one of these handcuff keys. In fact, quite frankly, I already have a ton of them. They're, you know, secreted all about most of the things I own at this point in terms of pants and backpacks and so on. So what I want to do is give away this handcuff key. Now... This would normally, I guess, be the part in the video where people start saying things like, don't forget to smash that subscribe button, ring the bell, hit me up on Patreon, and hey, have you tried Blue Apron and NordVPN? Okay, fuck that noise, because this isn't my primary revenue stream. I don't have a Patreon, my channel's not monetized, and, you know, I don't know how most of that shit works. But here's what I do know. I know that if I can get you folks to put a word in the comments, if you choose to comment, there are any number of random scripts online that I can run through the comments and choose somebody who's responded. If you want to do that, and we'll see how well this works, I'm going to decide to add this to my videos, because quite, quite frankly, I've been getting a collection of a lot of little bits of hardware over the years that I don't need, because I have plenty of cool things. I want to give you plenty of cool things. We're going to go with a theme of tasty and wonderful things that go inside of Deviant. So for this week's video... If you respond in the comments with the word tacos, that's tacos plural, because let's be honest, does anyone ever eat one taco? If they do, I don't want to be friends with them. I will randomly choose, or some magical internet juju will randomly choose one respondent who has used the word tacos. You can either just put the word by itself, you can be creative and use it in a sentence, you don't have to make me smile, but let's be honest, I'd appreciate that. You will get this key. I will reach out somehow to you. I, I don't know how through the YouTubery internet craziness. Probably it'll just consist of me responding to your comment or trying to message you on YouTube if that's a thing. I don't think YouTube has messages. Whatever. We're F it. We're doing it live. So yeah, say tacos somewhere in your comment if you feel like winning this key that I will mail to you. Hopefully you live, you know, in the United States. And just as a bonus, I mentioned the Mythbusters episode, right? These are genuine screen-used props for when Tracy and Tamra got out of their cuffs on that episode after I showed them how. Fuck it, I'm going to throw these in the envelope too, and you can either have a piece of, you know, B-level uh, cable distribution Hollywood memorabilia, or, you know, you just have some extra bobby pins to use practicing getting out of cuffs. Sound good? Tacos in your comments. I'll see you another week. Take it easy.